Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Check out this video with Investing with Ace. Here's the top five states where rental properties don't cash flow anymore thanks to higher interest rates. Incidentally, all these states are either sweaty or dusty, so we're gonna list them in order of sweatiest to dustiest. Number one in the sweatiest by far is Florida. Everyone from Jersey who went on vacation in 2020 just stayed out there and their buddies from New York joined them in 2021, pumping values to the point where landlords are not making money anymore, but stay tuned, this might change when all the crypto boys get foreclosed on. Number two is Georgia. I remember five years ago, you could buy a fourplex out there for some belly button lint and a toenail that's no longer the case anymore everything's expensive and in the worst neighborhood your rental property breaks even at the intersection of sweaty and dusty is number three texas aka california version 2.0 rental property prices are gonna have to come down here for you to see cash flow at today's interest rates which might happen after elon and co lay off a bunch of their staff number four is arizona i personally know tons of californians that have moved out here pricing millions of armadillos out of their home and pumping property values to a point that they do not cash flow at today's interest rates and number five the dustiest is nevada if you want to gamble away your social security check in a crow lobby this is the place to be if you want to make money on rentals it's not all right kirby you have properties in three of these five states so i really want to do this video to see what your opinion is now i know you got in early so you know you're you're doing your thing but georgia you're actually actively buying in this one and you've convinced me to buy up here so now i'm concerned so what are you talking about and, and what he's saying is what he's saying is absolutely right and what I, what I mean by absolutely right is if you if you don't, and you mentioned earlier, if you just starting out in real estate and you have no knowledge about the business, no knowledge about the uh, real estate industry, and you want to start buying rental properties. So, of course, you don't know nothing about negotiation. You probably barely know anything about cash flow, probably what you heard on the Internet and stuff like that, uh, cap rates and things like that. 99% of the properties in Florida, let's start here in Florida, that's being bought today is cash flow negative. There's no profit in it. I mean, you'd be lucky to find one that, lucky, what I mean lucky, I mean like you did with yours, to find a property that breaks even. And of course, me, I'm, I'm multifamily, but that breaks even. I mean, you found a perfect situation. I mean, you, you know, you went at it. You know, that the couple, I believe, they was going through a divorce. So they was just ready to get the get off the price. And, you know, you got a big haircut off of it. They cut the price and then you cut the price on them again. Uh, but that's because you doing the work and you know what's going on. But the average everyday mom and pop person is trying to come to Florida and buy a rental property to and in cash flow day one, unless they get in a sweet deal, a backdoor deal, none of the properties are cash flow. And the reason why I know, because I look at the MLS every day for the state of Florida. But I'll start off with Florida. Then what other question you got? No, that was, uh, I guess like, okay. So what about Georgia? Let's say, cause you're actually actively buying there, but it's working for you. Would you say that it's the same thing? Like, because you just know how to work the deals. Um, well, it's, it's understanding how to work the deals. It's, it's understanding everything. I mean, for me, you know, I'm not, I'm never buying a property at list price. So, and that's what Ace is talking about. He's, I, he's talking, you know, every day, I mean, you know, brand new people that's trying to get to, you know, the market, they don't know how to, you know, massage a deal, how to, you know, you hear no, that most people hear no one time crumble up and be like, oh, no, I'm done. You know, no, people don't scour the MLS. I mean, the last one that I just bought, I closed on last Thursday, Friday, the property was only on the MLS for what, like eight to 12 hours. And as soon as I saw it, because I look every day. I look actually three times a day. I look I look at it when I wake up. I look at it at lunchtime. I look at it at like 7 o'clock when I'm just sitting on the couch acting like I'm watching TV. And then and then I look at it when I go to bed. And I look at it for hours when I go to bed. Just laying in the bed, just watching it till like midnight or something like that. Just checking the different markets that I'm interested in. But, the, but it popped up and then I jumped on it. I paid below list price. And I had the seller pay closing costs. The same things we talk about on this channel on how to get deals done. But a new mom and pop investor coming out trying to just say, oh, I'm going to buy a property in Atlanta. I'm going to buy a property here. I'm going to buy a property there. And think that's going to cash flow? No way in hell. Even the property that I bought, if I would have paid list price and I paid all the closing costs and all that, that property wouldn't have cash flow. So that's the real takeaway from it. Okay, so that makes sense. So because investing with Ace is a tricky one. He's kind of like that, like Dave Ramsey approach where 
I guess you have to understand that he's talking to the majority of people. Because when he says things, it's just like, he says it like, this is how it is. So it was like, when I was hearing him talk about it, I was like, well, that's not exactly true because there can be cash flow deals like in Georgia from experience, but it makes sense. And he's talking, he's talking to the majority of Florida. Majority of Florida. Right. I mean, if you just heard this video right when you bought your property, your first property here in Florida, then there is always an exception to the rule. What you got was an exception to the rule. It wasn't, everybody's not doing it. I mean, we could pull up Zillow or pull up Redfin or whatever, and they just run the numbers on any rental property, any multifamily property. They don't cash flow. With the rents they're receiving now, there is no cash flow in the deal. Actually, it's more than no, it's not running at zero cash flow. It's running at negative cash flow. You would actually have to take money out your pocket every month to pay the mortgage just so tenants can live in your place. Every last one. Right. So, yeah, he has a point. Yeah. But then we go to Texas. Texas, you know, it's the same thing. Could some be found there? Yeah. But like you said, getting in early helped me out. So it gives me all that cushion. I could raise rates, my, you know, my rates low, you know, a lot of properties in, you know, Texas, Florida, paid in cash. So don't have to worry about that. You know, eventually I'm uh, recycling some capital out of there to go get more properties. But, but yeah, going new 2023, trying to go and say, oh, I'm about to buy a whole bunch of rentals and think that it's going to cash flow with no knowledge of the market. Those five areas and notice what the areas are. They are hot areas. They're all places where people want to gravitate to. And last but not least, all of those areas was uh, areas that got hit the hardest during the financial crisis in 08. So the property values skyrocketed fast. And if a catastrophic come, they are going to be the ones that the property dropped fast. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and I can see how like the deals say you're working on in Georgia from what you've been telling me or like this one I'm working on, like it was actually working the deal. It wasn't because if I like, w let's say with this property, um, it was just at forty five thousand. The rents were at two fifty. That doesn't cash flow. So, me bringing him down to thirty thousand, him countering thirty two five. Me speaking with the tenant before closing, him knowing rents are going up to five hundred, then it works. But just that list price, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't make sense. And that's and that's what it comes down to. So yeah, he's talking to the majority of people because of course majority of people and I mean you hear people all the time uh where you're at and I hear people, oh yeah, man, I want to get into buying rental properties. I mean, I've heard it so much. I've been I've only been doing this forever. And now people want to call just like the stock market, just like the stock market, when it's a fad now. Oh yeah, rental property. It's a fad now. Everybody all want to get in. Just like the stock market. Nobody wanted to get in 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It goes down and then it has a skyrocket up. It gets all over the internet, all over the news. And then in 2021, after it had, had over 100% move, okay, I want to get a stock market now. <laughs> That's a fad. And then the people that make it a fad drive the prices up, i.e. COVID, low interest rates, and all these uh, Airbnb hustlers. They're the one that create the bubble. And then next thing you know, when it don't work, oh man, that's a, that's a bad investment. No, you got bad timing or bad mm -hmm. operation execution. The funny thing too is like those same people, at least the people that were telling me they were getting involved in stocks in like 2020, 2021, those same people are the same ones saying now is a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> and like now is a good time because the market's coming down again. Like, and they're like, no, no, not right now. Like, what the heck? They just wait for the upturn. That's it. They look and and you see this, and it's funny. People people get their information from peculiar sources. Like you saying the the price of a stock right now is lower than. It was when you bought it back in 2021, 20, 2022. And you saying this is a good time. These people are was literally waiting for the CNN, the Fox News of the world, for the ticker to come down and say, oh, the stock market is at its high. It's a good time to get into the market. That's who they're waiting on. They're waiting for signs. They're waiting for to hear it from 
somebody of stature to say, oh, it's a good time. If you're waiting for somebody to tell you it's a good time, if you're waiting for news media to say it's a good time, housing, stocks, business, whatever, by the time they say it, they're already six months too late. I mean, if you look at the financial crisis, the market bottomed in March of 09, nobody was saying get into the stock market again until 2016. The market went up over 100%. That's what that's what's that's what's causing this mass chaos is people who they get the information from the wrong places and they wait for signs and wonders. Jesus is not coming down here and saying, hey, this is the time to execute this deal. Anytime is a good time to do a deal if you are executing and setting it up and doing it right. No matter if interest rates are at 10%, because in the 80s, interest rates was at damn near 15, 20%. And people were still buying rental property. It's about knowing how to execute the deal, knowing how to do the numbers, and going on about it. But Ace, invest with Ace, he's 100% right. For 99% of the people, those five states are the worst areas to try to find cash flow properties. With all that means said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.